Hello beautiful and handsome people and handsome guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is Gene Signatures and my name is Gene. So today I'll be making this jumpsuit. It's a jumpsuit with a yoke and it's padded. The half length is padded of course and it has a yoke. So and it's a total neck. So if this is what you're interested in, please kindly watch till the end. Sorry, I missed some clips when I was making this video because my phone was behaving funny. So please kindly bear with me. I'll try. If you make any requests, I can try to make uh, some tutorials on some places that I couldn't uh, find again on my phone. Please kindly bear with me. So let's get right over to the cotton table yes thank you so yes i have my fabric that i'll be using here already this is the fabric it's an african print and it's six yards of fabric and of course i'm going to be marking this on a pattern paper first so that it will be easier and faster and so that uh, most of the markings you would be able to see them as i do it so i've already marked out some basic um, measurements so that it will be fast for us so i got my shoulder measurements and then i came down by one inch for shoulder slope i marked my arm hole and then i got my bust line my under bust and of course my half length and then i came up by two inches for my chest line and then i carved out my arm hole just the way we do basic normal bodies so i just wanted to do all that off camera so that it will be fast so the next thing we're doing that is to take in our darts so that we we'll just uh, finish everything ASAP. So yes, I'll be marking my boss pan measurement and that will be divided into two and that gave me 3.5 inches. So I'll be marking that from my chest line all the way down. Please kindly extend your chest line. I forgot to do that, but I'll still do that in the course of um, inputting my measurements. And so for under the bust, I'll be taking one one inch on both sides. Please can you ignore the background noises? My daughter as usual. Yeah, so I'll be taking one one inch under the under bust, and then of course on the waistline, I'll be taking that, I'll be extending the one one inch all the way down. connecting it like so so from the bust line i'll be coming down by one inch in order to avoid all those um, pointed edges so just come down by one inch or half an inch and then i'll be carving that to meet that from my under bust of course i'll be carving it to meet the bust line that i came down by one inch and i'll do the same thing on the other side now everybody has their way of doing their own things but this is how i've always done mine and it has always come out beautiful and okay so yeah so the next thing i'm going to be doing now is to uh kind of ignore that because that was where i told you that i forgot to uh, rule out my chest line because ordinarily i'm not supposed to go up by one inch <laughs> So please kindly uh, ignore that. So I'm going to be dividing my shoulder measurement into two. So the midpoint, I'll be uh, connecting it from there to the bust line measurement. To the bust line, yeah. As you see me do. So that is how it will be. Just connect it like so, you can see. So that is we're trying to take our shoulder that so now i'm going to be extending my chest line like i told you and so yes so the next thing we're going to be doing now right on the chest line now ignore that yeah so right on the chest line i'll be taking in my uh, bust tightening so that it will not be um open when i'm sewing it so i'll take in one one inch on both sides and then I'm going to be connecting to my uh, bust line where I came down by uh, one inch. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just connect it like so. Yes, so that is how we have gotten our dots. So in order to get 
The next thing I will be doing right above now, okay, I want to mark my neck depth. For the neck depth, I'm making use of 2.5 inches, please. For the neck width, I make use of, I made use of 3 inches because this is going to be a total neck. So you don't want it to be too wide and because I'm making use of a net and the net is stretchy. So I would even advise if you want to use a net that is stretching, just use maybe 2.5 inches by 2 inches or 2.5 inches by 2.5 inches. It's better because you know it's 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 uh, it's like an elastic, it expands. It was after I had finished it that I saw that but I was able to do it very well and it came out fine so what i would advise go for 2.5 but if you're using a stretchy net fabric and so for the neck um the yoke that design that is in the front that is in form of like a v or a, a circle or a, there's a way it says share so i'm trying to use this my marker that is not a permanent marker because the other one is a permanent marker and it stains everywhere so that was why i brought out this one just to have like a, a dummy of what I wanted to do and so I now realized that coming down from there it will still be too visible because the thing came down as you saw on the thumbnail so I needed to go up by one inch from my chest line because I needed to cover up the cleavage a little bit so I went up by one inch and then of course I extended the dart lines by one inch as well as I marked one one inch on both sides so that is how, how far I'll be carving bits. You can see I'm going up that one inch like so, so that I'll come down to get the, uh, the shape of the design on the net. That is what I'm trying to do. So I came down, I came up by one inch from my chest line because if I did it directly, like on the chest line, the post area will be too visible and that will not be proper so that was why i came up by one inch from my chest line so i'm trying to carve out the shape of the yoke because it's not a sweetheart neckline it's somehow like a v and a circle i don't know so but i just carved out something like this and i believe it was at least near what it looked like yeah so that is why i labeled that part my yoke so if you feel you didn't really understand this part please kindly rewatch it so that you would see it very very well and so we're almost through with our markings and the next thing i'm going to be doing now is to be inputting my normal measurements and then i already did that for my bust and then i'm taking back the two inches for the dart and then i added two inches to so another ones and then i went to the west uh, waist area I'll divide my waist by four. I'll put back the two inches for the dart because I used one one inch on both sides. And then, of course, I added three inches to the waist area. I didn't do anything under the bust. I left it like that. And so I'll be connecting that. Just draw a straight line from your bust line to your waistline like so. So all these places that I'm marking are the ones that will be cut off. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and I'll be back to show you because I don't want the video to be too lengthy. So I'd already cut it out and this is how it looks. You can see that this gave us something the way the thing looks on the thumbnail. So this is the net I'll be using to cut out the yoke. It's a very soft and stretchy net. Why I bought this net is that it's not the net that would tear. You know, we have different types of quality of nets, but this quality is quite okay. So now I'm going back to the um, back of the bodies. So for this, I'm not really using the uh, a paper pattern. I'm marking directly on the fabric. And so for any jumpsuit, please remember that this is a jumpsuit. And for the half length, instead of my client's half length is 19, but I ended up using 20 inches. This is just to avert any stories that touch the heart. You know, by the time you join the trouser part to the half length, so that everything like about the crotch area 
will sit perfectly so that is why you need to add that extra one inch to your half length and so now i'll be marking my shoulder slope as indicated like so shoulder slope is one inch so basically the only difference between the front and the back is going to be my zipper allowance which i had already marked i marked 1.5 inches and then so i came down for my armhole curve and then i'll be connecting that you just basically repeat what you did in the front the only thing is um, all the darts that we added in the front will not be added at the back the only thing we need at the back is just the normal darts that will give shape to the back so i'm getting the midpoint for my arm hole and then i'll be carving out my arm hole So I'm getting my bust point divided into two. I'll mark that and then I'll add two inches sewing allowance. And so for the waist area, I'll be dividing my waist by four, and then I'll add one inch for that, and then three inches like I did in the front for sewing allowance. And then I'll connect that. And so we're through the back bodies. So the next thing we're going to be doing now is to do the darts. So I'll be dividing the darts into two, so that's 3.5. And then from the chest line, I'll be coming down by one inch, and then I'll connect my darts by putting half a inch, and then I'll connect it. So I'm going to be matching that and then I'll cut it out. So for the back depth, I used 3 inches by 1 inch. So you just come down by 1 inch. Remember, this is going to be a total mark. So you don't need it to be too deep. So in order to avoid bulginess at the back, this is like the usual way I normally do it. Just come in by half an inch and then slant it almost to the um, neckline. And then you slant that out. So this um, prevents any bulginess at the zip area. So you don't want to wear your clothes and everything will be bulgy. You know, that will be an eyesore. So that is what I'm basically trying to trim off. So you can see the way I slanted it in like so. And then at the waist area, I always do this. I'll just come up by half an inch. And then I'll slant it into the uh, that area. This equally gives the waist area a balance that <laughs> it's always very beautiful. Apart from the bulginess, it makes it uh, sit perfectly at that uh, back area. So um, basically three. So we'll be adding over to um, the next step. And so yeah, I forgot totally here yeah, that I was supposed to cut out the yoke. Maybe because I cut it, I cut the fabric directly. So I didn't remember that I was supposed to cut out the yoke part. So I'll just basically just cut out the chest line as you see me. You see me do it right about now. But if you want a V-neck or thereabout for yours, please let me go ahead. But because this is going to be a total neck, so you should just do exactly as you see here. So 
The only thing is the depth of the yolk. If you don't want it to be as deep as mine, you can just go up and mark whatever you want. But I would want it to be like this. So that is why I just cut out that part. So that part will be for the yolk. That is where I used that net to cut out. Yeah. Mm, so that was what I was trying to explain because I totally, totally forgot. Pardon me for that. Yeah. So we're basically through with the upper part. And so we are going straight to the next step, which is cutting up the sleeves. I had to cut out the sleeves because I don't want stories that touch because, you know, um, it's a known fact that after cutting your yoke, the remaining part of the cloth will not be enough for your sleeves because the sleeves are a bigger part. So just please go ahead to cut out your sleeves first so that whatever you have left over, you can manage it to cut out the yoke. So that is why I had to come out and cut out the sleeve. So it's just a normal basic sleeve. You just fold into two and then cut out, mark your armhole and then come down by five inch from there because that is the universal or whatever. And then you connect it to the round sleeve of your client and then you cut it out. So it's as easy as that. So it's just a normal um, basic sleeve. So if you've watched up to this level, please kindly subscribe, like, share, and please kindly hit on that notification icon so that you get notified anytime I upload an interesting and uploading video. Thank you. So while folding this, I made a mistake. I didn't know that. I thought I had folded it into four, not knowing that it was into three. So I ended up wasting that part. So I just go ahead and cut out another one, and then that will be it. I was just trying to rush this video because I made everything the same day. So uh, I'll be going over to the lower part. So this is just like normal cutting of a trouser. So I've had, I have several tutorials on how to go about this and i use basically almost the same process i've always been using but i just felt like i just need to do it again because some people may stumble on this video and they've not watched my any of my tutorials before so that is why i'm trying to like show it again because if not i would have just fast forwarded all these places yeah so basically what I'm trying to get is the length of my lower part because we've already cut out the half length. We all know it's a palazzo. So the lower part is the trouser part. So what I basically marked now is my full length minus. Well, whatever was left for my full length minus half length. So you minus that and whatever you have left should be the lower part of the cloth. So, and then you can now add uh, sewing allowances as you deem fit. Like mine, I added like two inches extra. And in order for you to determine what you need to have on fold, please kindly just divide your time measurement into two and then you add probably two inches or three inches just to be on the safer side. So that is what I have on fold here. Yeah. So I had to cut it out because the fabric was just too much on the table and that we won't be uh, confused so now i have what i need on the table and i'll be marking the appropriate things as we need so now the first thing i'll be marking now will be my waist to hip and so for my waist to hip is 10 inches and i'll be marking that And then I'll be wearing out a straight line. So bear in mind that this is a palazzo trouser. It's a wide-legged palazzo trouser. It's not tight-fitted. Yeah. And then for the crotch depth, I'll be dividing my hip measurement into four. And of course, I'll be adding one inch for ease. So that, you know, we don't want that area to be too tight because this is a palazzo. So it has to be very free. So I added one inch to my 
and that gives me 12 inches so that is what I'm ruling out like so so we have our waist we have our hip and then of course we have our crotch depth so basically I'll be marking up my each and uh, my hip measurement divided by four whatever that is I'll be marking that and then I'll add one inch of sewing allowance and so I'll be taking the line all the way to my waist area like so and then I'll be getting my waist measurement divided by four whatever that is I'm going to be marking it my my client zone is nine inches so I'll be marking that and then I'll be giving one inch for that and then one inch for sewing allowance so whatever that I mark there, I'll be connecting it to my hip line. And so I'll connect like so. So that is what we have now. So now I'm going to the tie measurement and that is where I'll be, the crotch depth part is where I'll be marking my tie measurement. And so remember our tie is always divided into two, we don't divide into four. So my client's tie was 33 and I think that is 15 and a half or even 16 and a half, yeah. So whatever that is, just add like one inch extra and then we cover it like so. So that gives us our crotch curve. And so right from there, there's no need to mark my knee, my whatever. Just rule a straight line all the way down. Because it's a wide-legged palazzo. And so we're basically through with the front piece. So I'll be cutting this out. So I'll just be slitting that open from the lower side and when I get to the hip side where I'm connected from the waist I will cut as I marked on it too. As you can see, so I'll just cut out that side. So we are through with our front piece. As you can see it's looking beautiful. So now I'll be folding my fabric and then I'll be placing this on it to cut out the back piece it is just basically the normal way i do my trousers and my shorts that is exact way that i did this I just added some few manipulations so i know you won't see this very well so on the crotch level i came down by half an inch and then i extended my crotch by two inches the reason why i came down by half an inch is for the crotch part to sit perfectly on my bum I don't want a situation whereby my crotch will be entering my bum bum. <laughs> so yeah, on the waist area, I'll just um, do the normal way that I usually do. On the waist area, like on that crotch side, I'll be coming in by 2 inches. And then for that 2 inches that I came in with, I'll still replace it on this other side by extending it by that same 2 inches. As you see me. So I extended that. It will still come out to be the same way, the same waist. So I was slanting that because I went up by 2 inches. And then I will slant that to that 2 inches that I have there. And so I'll be marking like 1.5 inches up to the waist, the hip area from that extension of the 2 uh, inches because I'll be making use of that as my zipper by the time I join everything so that everything would run, it will not uh, look odd. But if you want to add your zipper allowance to the fly area, that is the crotch part area, please you can kindly do that but i did not do that i don't want that this looking somehow so i knew how i was able to manipulate that when i added my zipper but if you're a beginner please kindly add your zipper allowance 
so i'll be connecting my crotch like so i don't want the crotch part to be bulgy sort of now if you want to add the zipper if there's no love lost you can do it but i know how i manipulate that when i'm adding my zipper allowance so i'll be connecting my crotch to the two inches that i went up with on the waist area so like so i know you are not seeing it very well because of the fabric you can see the reason why i used a pattern paper when i was cutting the front piece but it's just because this trouser part i've had several tutorials so that's why i didn't really want to waste my time wasting a paper so please if you really did not understand this part i have a tutorial on how to cut the trouser or a palazzo or a short knitter the same exact way i did it the only difference is the length so just kindly go and watch it out thank you all so i'm connecting that straight all the way down from the two inches extension so i'm just connecting it all the way down to the length of the trousers and so we're basically through with the manipulations and then i'll be cutting it out So once again, I'm sorry that most of the clips of this sewing tutorial was, I don't know, my phone was really, really misbehaving. I'm so sorry if you didn't see some of the sewing parts. Please kindly forgive me. I'm working on how to get a camera or a better phone so that I'll be able to dish out more beautiful tutorials. It's just that I would have, if the clips were not lost, I would have done it back then and back believe me but i just didn't know how it happened it just deleted it just keeps misbehaving so please i'm so sorry thank you for your understanding so yes this is the back piece as you can see there's a crotch area and so in order for you to get to that just um uh, merge it into two like that and then get the midpoint and then kind of notch then you can just come down by four inches with that same is applicable for the front and if you want to add a pocket please can you go ahead and just add your pockets before uh, joining your affluence to this but i'm not adding a pocket because there's no pocket in the thumbnail so we're basically through with this and of course i added a lining to the trouser part as well so if you want to add a lining, you can go ahead and do that. I'm so, so not happy that all the uh, places that I cut out the lining and all, I didn't see them again. Oh, oh, so painful. So i would already cut out my um, nets for the back pieces, as you can see. I had to join some parts, but uh, thank God, hopefully it was not showing later because all those places went in as a sewing allowances. So I didn't have any issues with those. So please always ensure to cut out your sleeves before your yoke. It's very important. Not important, it's important. So yes, this is the front piece and I've cut it out. And exactly what you have like this is what you are going to cut out for your lining. Of course, the net does not need a lining because it's going to be a see-through. So I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing. I think I was able to show this part where I joined the upper part. It's only the lower part that I don't think I saw the clip. So, so yes, you see, I've already joined the uh, upper part. As you can see, this is how it looks on the uh, thumbnail. The only thing was that it was on my dummy or my mannequin because I pinned at the back, so it extended that frontal part. This is exactly how it looks. So it's all looking beautiful and also so we're almost true so basically i'm going to be joining my flounce because you can see on the waist area it has a flounce flounce from the waist to the side of the trouser so uh, uh if you want me to make a tutorial on how to cut out the flounce i would i'll do that please kindly leave it in the comment section and 
any questions that you have i will answer you so i'm going to be joining it like so i've just joined the trouser part to the uh, laugh length and then our clothes is just uh, ready so the next thing i'll be showing you is that the clothes is ready i'm so sorry like i told you i lost some clips so yeah I'll go ahead to do that. Uh, I'll just come back to show you the end result. So yeah, you can see that I walked all through till the night so that is why so as you can see i had already fixed the um everything even the neckline the total neck i'd already fixed it i fixed the sleeves i've added the band i've, had, I've done everything so it was like 100 percent ready here because i don't know i just lost some clips that i just can't even attend for because of this phone so please kindly Thank you for all for watching. Hit on the subscribe button, like, share, and kindly subscribe. Thank you all, and God bless you all. I promise to be careful next time when I'm recording so that I won't lose some of the pieces that are already. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So I later changed that zip because the zip was behaving funny. I later changed it because I wouldn't want a situation where a client is wearing your clothes and then the zip behaves funny. So I changed it later because I didn't know that it had fault. So when I was opening it, it started that madness. So thank you all and God bless you all. Ciao.